Okay, gang, I'm going to start the lecture for 2.4. So 2.4 covers two different topics. Uh, one of the topics is continuity, and the other topic is one-sided limits. All right, so let's first go over this sheet here. So to do this, take into account that as the limit as x goes to a particular value goes to infinity, and the limit as uh, x goes to c of g goes to l. So I just want to go over these basic properties when one of the limits is going to infinity, the output, not the input. So in the previous lecture, we had the input going to infinity. This is talking about when the output is going to infinity. So just be careful on that distinction. All right, so here we go. And you've seen this a little bit now from 4.6. So this won't be totally new. So if you're going to do the sum and difference of the limits, that's like infinity plus or minus L, right? Because this one's infinity, this one's L. Now try to remember that this is just a fixed value. So if it helps you, you could think of L uh, just for our case, just to make this easier, let's think of L as like the value of 5, okay? It's just going to help some students instead of it being so abstract. So L means it's just a fixed number. So let's pretend it's a 5. So if you do infinity plus a fixed number, plus or minus, so infinity plus 5, or infinity minus 5, I guess I'll use L, but you could put 5 in, in your brain, okay? So infinity plus or minus 5, what do you think that's going to end up being? Right, that's going to end up being infinity. All right, now what if you multiply with that? Now over here it's saying that L is a positive number, so you can think of positive 5 when we do this. So this is going to be infinity times L or 5 if that's easier for your brain. So right, uh, I'm picking 5 as a random value. So 5 times infinity or L times infinity, what would that equal? Okay, that would equal to infinity. So infinity times a fixed number is infinity. Infinity plus or minus a fixed number is infinity. Now here, watch this. L is a negative number now. That's what, that's what less than or equal to zero means. So you can think of negative five, right? So it's infinity times a negative number. So think of infinity times negative five, for instance. What would that be? That would be negative infinity, okay? So Neg uh, infinity times a negative number is going to be negative infinity. All right, and the last one, and you guys have done this, so this is nothing new. If you have a fixed number over infinity, like 5 over infinity, you're sharing $5 with everybody in the world, that's going to approach zero. Okay? So those are just some basic concepts. You've actually seen them before. All right, let me see what's on the next side here. All right, vertical asymptotes, I guess I'll start this little bit with you. Vertical asymptotes is a, a, a line that your function approaches where it becomes unbounded, meaning your output becomes unbounded. So notice we're talking about the output becoming unbounded versus the input. It's really important that you notice a vertical asymptote happens when you have a number over zero, right? So you gotta be really careful on these distinctions. Uh, zero over a number is zero. A number over zero is undefined, so here's the case where we're saying that you've got a VA, and zero over zero, as we, we mentioned before, is indeterminate. So you've got to sort of keep these different categories in your head. All right, let's find the vertical asymptotes here. Just by looking at this, can you see where the vertical asymptotes are? All right, hopefully you see here and here, this is where X is plus or minus two, okay? So the function becomes unbounded at plus or minus 2. Let's look at some analytical examples now. So let's start with the first one. So you'll have to factor this. Difference of perfect squares. And again, it's, the VA is going to occur where the denominator equals to zero, but the numerator does not. Okay, so as you can see from this one, you're going to get your VAs are going to be at plus or minus five, because that's where the denominator is equal to zero. Now the next one, it's a plus sign, so that's not factorable. Okay. 
in the real system, this doesn't equal to zero. So don't say plus or minus 2i because now you're in the complex system. It factors in complex numbers. It does not factor in real numbers. So anything you put in for x, it uh, will not, like negative 2 squared doesn't work because that will actually give you 8 in the bottom because negative 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. So this is not factorable. This will never equal to 0. So in terms of this one, the VA has none. So we, we cannot assume every graph is going to have a vertical asymptote because it's a fraction, right? This one doesn't have a vertical asymptote in it. All right, now this one's a little tricky. It's already factored. Now where do you think it, does this have a VA? One, none, two, what do you think? All right, hopefully you just said that the VA here is X equals to negative one. And why didn't I pick this guy? Why didn't I pick X? And hopefully you caught it because there's an X on both sides. So if you let X be zero, you're actually going to get zero over zero. And if you get zero over zero, what is that on this function? Hopefully you remember that's actually a hole. So this actually has a hole at zero. Okay, again, because the VA is when you have a number over zero and the hole is happening when you have zero over zero. Okay, let me end this video uh, here. Catch you in another one. Bye-bye.